So in the next lesson, we are going to look at uh, how we can measure the empirical fit of our linear regression model. So this forms the topic of uh, goodness of fit. So uh, let me first go back to this uh, empirical example of the hedonic model of housing market. So here is the Excel output of the uh, regression model that we have considered before with the three explanatory variables. And uh, for clarity, I have here highlighted some of these uh, elements with the red color. On the, on the top part of this, uh, of this table, we have here the so-called R-squared statistic and adjusted R-square that I have highlighted with red color. So these both statistics uh, are measures of the empirical fit of the model. And I have also then in the middle part of the table, I have indicated with the red color also so-called ANOVA decomposition. So this ANOVA is abbreviation of analysis of variance. And uh, in fact, this um, ANOVA table, well, it can be, can be interesting of its own right, but it's also used for calculating this R-square statistic and also the adjusted R-square statistic. And later on, it will play a role in this uh, F-test of uh, joint significance that we will consider in another lecture later on. So let's look into a little bit more detail that, uh, that uh, what is this ANOVA table and what is this R-square statistic. So to begin with, let's consider a, a simple graphical ex example. So I will here consider a single regression case with single X variable uh, so that we can, we can gain some, uh, some uh, uh, intuition through this kind of uh, graphical example. So on this diagram, I have I just focus on a single observation i, and I have indicated here the single observation with the with the red dot labeled by y i. Then I have also drawn here this upward sloping regression line, which is governed by this uh, coefficients b one and b two. So notice that. Uh, uh, any point on this uh, black uh, regression line is obtained as, uh, as b1 plus b2 times uh, the corresponding x value. And we can also use this regression line to form a prediction. So I have here indicated then, then y hat i, which is very common terminology to indicate the prediction by hat. So y hat i is then the prediction from the regression line that if we, if we in, insert in this uh, our regression equation, this b1 plus b2 times xi, we obtain this uh, predicted value of yi predicted by our regression line. Okay. And then I have also on the, in the diagram uh, plotted a, a horizontal blue line, which is labeled y by y upper bar. And this blue line is uh, supposed to indicate the sample average of our dependent variable y. So it is just the arithmetic average of all observations. And uh, in this diagram, the purpose is to demonstrate to you that uh, we can break down the difference from the sample average to two parts. So I have indicated them in this uh, equation below the diagram, and I have the three different colors, so, so which is also corresponding to this kind of uh, vertical lines in the diagram. So consider this kind of uh, uh, vertical red line, which can be analytically expressed as the difference between the uh, yi, the value of the dependent variable in the observation i, minus the uh, y upper bar. So that would indicate you the length of this, uh, this red line. And we can break it down to two parts. Uh, I have here this uh, uh, vertical black line, which is the uh, in this equation, it would be yi minus uh, yi hat. So that's the difference between observed value of y and the prediction by the regression equation. And then we have the uh, blue vertical line, a little bit thicker than this horizontal line. And that would be uh, y hat i minus uh, y upper bar. So that's the difference between the prediction from the regression line and the sample average. And uh, it's easy to verify that this uh, difference from the sample mean, this red, red line, is equal to the sum of the, of the difference from the regression line indicated by the black line and the difference of the regression line from the sample average, the blue line. 
You can also make some some other examples to verify it also in the case that the, your red dot would fall somewhere between this regression line and the sample mean, or it would be somewhere above this uh, this uh, sample average. In any case, the same equation holds. Okay, so you can you can plot some alternative uh, uh, observations and see that this uh, this same equation must must hold always. If you think of the equation below the diagram, then uh, it's easy to see that this uh, y hat i, which has first a negative sign and then positive sign, so they must cancel out, and what we have left is this y i minus y upper bar. So then let's consider what happens if we then not take this difference, but we take the squared difference. So if we take uh, for each observation i, we take uh, the difference of uh, y i minus the sample average y upper bar and, and take the squared value of this difference and sum over all observations. So that would be this um, uh, red uh, sum on the left hand side of the middle equation. And I have indicated it here as the total sum of squares or TSS. So interestingly, we can also break down this total sum of squares to two components uh, labeled by RSS or residual sum of squares and ESS, which could be called sum of squares explained. So this RSS uh, residual sum of squares is uh, similar to this previous uh, graphical illustration. Um, we take the difference between the observed yi and the prediction of the regression equation labeled by y hat i, and uh, we take squared value of this difference and sum over all observations in our sample. So that gives us this, uh, this uh, uh, RSS indicated with the black color in these equations. And then we can also consider the blue part. So this is this uh, explained sum of squares. So we take uh, this uh, difference between this prediction of the regression line, that's this y hat i, uh, minus the y upper bar, which is the sample average, take the squared values and sum over all observations i. So it can be shown that this, uh, for any data set uh, and any regression line, this uh, total sum of squares TSS must be equal to the residual sum of squares plus uh, explained sum of squares. So TSS equals RSS plus ESS. And uh, this is also the case in this uh, uh, example of the hedonic model of housing market. So on the bottom part of the slide, I have here again reproduced this ANOVA, ANOVA table, so if you, which, which indicates these uh, this, this, uh, exact values. So notice that this is in, uh, in, uh, in the order of magnitude of, of uh, billions or trillions in this case. So this column SS refers to this uh, TSS, RSS, and ESS. So for sake of clarity, I have also now here inserted in this equation that what is this ESS, what is RSS, and what is TSS. Uh, in the middle column, there is this D if, this DF refers to degrees of freedom, but uh, we don't need it yet. We will come back to that in the context of the F-test, okay? So, so those are the uh, sums of squares, and, and this is this uh, analysis of variance uh, decomposition. So now one, one more point I want to point out. So if you think about the, the formula for the sample variance, so think about this TSS, this, uh, this uh, sum of squares, uh, uh, total sum of squares indicated by, by a red color. So if we would uh, divide this sum of squares by n minus one, it would be just the formula for the, for the sample variance for our dependent variable y. So essentially this ANOVA decomposition is breaking down the sample variance of our y variable to the two parts. And this is why it is called analysis of variance, because it is the sample variance that we are, we are essentially uh, breaking down. So you could equally well divide all these three components by n minus one, so you would have then the sample variance. And indeed then, uh, how we measure then the empirical fit of the, of the regression model, this is called, uh, the statistic is called coefficient of determination, and that is uh, typically uh, indicated by this, uh, this uh, R squared uh, 
So, so the, the statistic is called coefficient of determination, but perhaps somewhat counterintuitively, it's labeled by R squared. So this R squared statistic is calculated. Uh, it can be calculated in two alternative ways. Both are equivalent. So the first way is to, is to take a ratio of this uh, uh, ESS, the sum of squares explained by the model, and divided by the total sum of squares. Uh, so that is perhaps a more intuitive way in the sense that uh, we can take the ratio of, uh, of uh, the proportion of variance that is explained by the model divided by the total variance of the dependent variable. So in that sense, the R squared statistic can be literally explained, uh, uh, sorry, literally interpreted as the proportion of the total variance of the dependent variable that is explained by the, is explained by the regression equation. This ESS divided by TSS. So ESS indicates this uh, sum of squares explained by the model, and TSS is the total sum of squares. Another way of calculating it, and this might be sometimes more convenient, is to then uh, take 1 minus uh, RSS divided by TSS. So RSS was this residual sum of squares. Uh, so it's also equivalent to take this R squared statistic as uh, 1 minus the unexplained proportion of the variance. So obviously this kind of uh, total variance can be decomposed to the explained part and unexplained part. So R squared statistic is defined as, as uh, the proportion of variance that is explained by the model, but it is obviously also then, then 1 minus the, the proportion of variance that remains unexplained. So that is this residual sum of squares. So either way you calculate it, uh, both ways, uh, both are equivalent ways of calculating this uh, R squared statistic, which is the commonly used measure of empirical fit. And indeed, it has this kind of nice interpretation that, uh, that the proportion of variance in our dependent variable Y that is explained by the model. Um, so you might ask why this uh, statistic is called coefficient of determination. But uh, what is this uh, uh, abbreviation R squared? Why it is, for example, not just uh, C or something like that? So the reason is the following. Uh, if we have the single explanatory variable only, so we are in the single regression case, then if, in fact, we can show that this R squared statistic uh, is just equal to the squared value of the sample correlation coefficient. And remember that the sample correlation coefficient is typically denoted by R. That is the common 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 uh, symbol for the correlation coefficient. So in the single regression case, of course, then R squared is literally the the correlation coefficient to power two. So R squared. And uh, indeed, if you look at this uh, Excel output of the regression model, there's also so-called multiple R statistic reported, which would be this that just R square root of uh, R squared statistic. And uh, this could be seen as this kind of multivariate extension of the of the correlation coefficient. So I think it should be quite quite uh, clear by now that there's many links to the correlation analysis and uh, linear regression model. So so we we calculated the slope coefficient, for example, based on the covariance of x and y. And now we also see that in the single regression model, even this uh, R squared statistic is just the squared value of the the correlation coefficient. Another point about the R squared statistic I want to want to mention is that, uh, of course, uh, we would like to have uh, have a relatively high R squared statistic in the sense that it uh, indicates that uh, our model is able to explain a large proportion of the of the variance in the dependent variable. But on the other hand. Uh, uh, making R squared very close to one is also not uh, usually the purpose of the analysis, and uh, it's difficult to say that what would be the the ideal or let alone optimal value of the R squared statistic. That sometimes, uh, if the if the dependent variable y is very hard to explain or predict, then then uh, R squared statistic can be relatively small, and uh, it it could be fine. I mean, it's not possible to say that what kind of R squared value would be meaningful or relevant. It's just in some sense a an, an descriptive statistic that, okay, how large proportion we can explain. Uh, 
Uh, but question that I would like to also also you to think about is that okay, what happens to this coefficient of determination if we include more explanatory variables to the model? So suppose that we have also data for some other explanatory variables. So if we just expand our model by including more regressors x, then then what could happen to this R squared statistic? So if you think about how the R squared statistic is calculated, then then uh, consider first this T as, as uh, total sum of squared used in the in the denominator of this of this ratio. Then uh, clearly the total sum of squares is unaffected by the number of variables in your model because it's just the same dependent variable. Doesn't matter how many x variables your model includes, TSS is always the same. However, uh, obviously when you include uh, additional explanatory variables, the the optimization underlying this linear regression uh, or, or the least squares estimator will always want to fit the, your data the, the best way it can to, to, to minimize the residual sum of squares. So remember that the, our objective to start with in the ordinary least squares was to minimize RSS. And uh, even if it is just uh, for sake of some, some uh, arbitrary uh, correlation, then, then if you include, include more variables, then RSS can never decrease, it, it, it can only increase. In the worst case, there's no impact, and in that sense, the, the slope coefficient of the additional regression can, can be zero, in which case there's no impact on the R-squared statistic. But uh, uh, whenever, this, um, whenever the additional regression has some, some other coefficient than zero, then, then this RSS will, will always increase. So in that sense, uh, if you wanted to increase the R squared statistic, you could just always just include uh, additional explanatory variables, uh, and R squared will necessarily increase, even though perhaps just marginally, but still. But like I said, it's also uh, somehow increasing or maximizing R squared statistic is by no means the purpose of the regression analysis, and uh, therefore. The idea with the so-called adjusted R-square statistic is to then uh, um, take into account that, okay, how many explanatory variables was needed to, to uh, achieve this kind of empirical fit. So notice that here is the formula for the adjusted R-square statistic if you are interested. So in some sense, it gives just kind of degrees of freedom penalty. So that, uh, that uh, here this uh, capital K is the, is the number of... Uh, parameters in the model. So if you include more regressors, this capital K increases. So it's not uh, not always the case that the adjusted R square would increase if you include more explanatory variables. So this is in some sense a, a relatively simple uh, mechanical formula that, that, that can be used for correcting this, uh, um, this R square statistic. However, if you use the adjusted R squared, you lose also this uh, intuitive uh, interpretation of the original R squared statistic, which was the um, with, with this kind of proportion of uh, total variance explained. So this kind of ANOVA direct con connection to this ANOVA decomposition is lost uh, by this kind of adjustment. And uh, in fact, if we dig more deeper to this uh, justification for making this just uh, adjustment. Uh, uh, it's not entirely clear that why this kind of adjustment would be would be useful. So, for example, I have here taken a, a quotation from a, a Doherty's uh, econometrics textbook, uh, who's arguing that there is little to be gained by fine tuning the coefficient of determination by a correction of dubious value. So, uh, I tend to agree with Doherty's remark that uh, that uh, that. Uh, uh, in, in any case, this R squared or adjusted R squared is just a descriptive statistic. Uh, we shouldn't put too much uh, emphasis on such kind of descriptive uh, statistic. Uh, and uh, at least this original R squared statistic has a, has a very compelling interpretation as the proportion of variance explained by the model, which is lost if we make this kind of degrees of freedom correction. And, uh, and in any case, we, we uh, we should be, of course, cautious that not use too many degrees of freedom. And this is, uh, this is also, also uh, I'll come back to that, uh, that uh, so parsimony of the model is of interest. So we should not use a more complicated model uh, 
than necessary. So that will be also a topic of the, of, the, of the next lecture. So I have now at least uh, clarified you what is the interpretation of the R-squared statistic and adjusted R-squared statistic. And uh, uh, my recommendation would be to report the, the R-squared rather than the adjusted R-squared. So in the next lecture, then I will also a also little bit clarify this claim that I made about the parsimony of the model and uh, we'll also discuss about the nonlinearities. So, so I want to clarify also to what extent the linear regression model is really restrictive and, and um, imposes linearity in terms of the model variables. Thanks and see you in the next uh, lesson.